we have a lot of news making headlines today and over the weekend, including a very emotional night last night at the Tony Awards. I don't know if you watched any of that. We're going to get to the highlight in a moment. But first, the deaths of Kate Spade and then Anthony Bourdain. You saw that on Friday. Still sending shockwaves across the country. 55-year-old Kate Spade took her own life on June 5th. And then just days later, we learned that famed chef and television personality Anthony Bourdain died by suicide. He inspired millions with his love of food and culture and his panache, just his style in delivering these stories to us. And his mom is now speaking out, telling NBC News that her younger son, Christopher, was the one who broke the news to her. For more, here's NBC's Kate Snow. What's up, Anthony? This morning, Anthony Bourdain's mother is opening up. This was the greatest show. Just days after her son's tragic death, in a phone interview with Today, Gladys Bourdain says she last heard from her son on Mother's Day, telling us there was never any sign something was wrong. Heartbroken by his death by suicide, she described him as feisty and very talented, adding he should be remembered as a lover of people of all kinds. French police tell NBC News Bourdain was found unresponsive in his room at the Chambard Hotel, southwest of Strasbourg, early Friday morning. The Emmy-winning star was in France shooting an episode of his series, Parts Unknown. Just days before his death, Bourdain was active on social media. Cheers. Posting videos and Instagramming his meals in the French countryside. The New York Times reports Bourdain skipped dinner Thursday night and didn't show up for breakfast the next morning. We thought it was strange, a waiter told the Times. His friend was waiting at breakfast and waiting and waiting. Tell all your customers. Bourdain's close friend, famed chef Eric Repair, discovered him in his hotel room. In a statement to NBC News, Repair called Bourdain inspiring and generous, one of the great storytellers of our time who connected with so many, adding, I wish him peace. Another close friend, renowned chef Jacques Pepin, says Bourdain's influence was enormous. Tony, my friend, wherever you are, to you, I will never forget you. For colleagues at CNN, Bourdain's death is devastating. I was actually thinking about this about two months ago. That uh, he, he, I looked at, I looked at him as somebody who actually gave me hope for uh, what one's life could become. Bourdain had talked openly about his struggles with drugs and depression. There was some dark genie inside me that I very much hesitate to call a disease. Uh, that led me to dope. His former restaurant in New York is now a makeshift memorial as tributes pour in for the superstar chef and intrepid traveler who brought exotic cultures and his oversized personality into our homes. His mother says the person we saw on TV reflected who Bourdain was in real life, saying he didn't disguise anything. He was who he was, and it was out there for everyone to see. Joining me now to discuss this and other news making the rounds today, Amy Holmes, co-host of PBS's In Principle, Zerlina Maxwell, MSNBC political analyst, and Jennifer Hartstein, child and adolescent psychologist. Welcome to you all. Great to have you here. Good morning. The, it was so shocking, right? It was so shocking on Friday to hear about Anthony, just days after we talked about Kate, right? And I think everyone was feeling that, like, what? These two celebrities in particular, because that always makes more news, now, let me start with you on it, Jen, because they are, there is reporting about something called the suicide contagion, mm -hmm. where especially if a very well-known person um, dies by suicide, it, it's not that it makes somebody else do it, but it puts the idea in their head in, in a way that becomes real? Right. So, you know, we know that people with depression and anxiety, or, you know, even if they don't, but maybe super stressed out and overwhelmed, might be feeling like life could be better if they weren't here. It'd be easier for them. It'd be easier for their friends and family. There's all sorts of reasons why people die by suicide. So hearing about it then might solidify that there is a way out. Maybe I've been thinking about it, but I don't have a plan, and then I hear about someone's plan, and I go, oh, wait, that makes sense. I can do it that way. And we know there is lots of research over time that especially when a celebrity does die by suicide, there is an uptick in completed suicides or suicide attempts following that for right, a period with, with of Robin time. It happened with Robin Williams as well. Yes. So we have to be really mindful of how we're reporting it, what we're talking about, what we're doing, so that we can minimize that risk. Otherwise, it's going to happen. Yeah. You know, it's like the, the guidelines urge news organizations not to talk about the details. You don't need to know how it was done in the same way we don't talk about, you know, when you have a car accident, 
what part of the car, you know what I mean? You don't, you don't get into the specifics and it's not necessary to get into the specifics. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that these high profile celebrities who on paper look like they have it all, mm -hmm. right? It's, it is a good time to remind ourselves that no one has it all. Right. Mm -hmm. right. No one has it all. Right. We all have our struggles. We all have our sadnesses. And, you know, the beauty of life is in, is in the struggle. Mm -hmm. And sort of finding the moments where you look at your kid playing at his little piano recital like I did this weekend and just savoring that, not in the big paycheck and not necessarily in the world travel. It, it's, it's in the small things. I think that's true, Megan, and, and I can tell you as someone who has suffered bouts of depression that what has helped me in terms of reporting on it is when you see particularly famous people who've gone through this talk about it openly and how they got to the other side, mm -hmm. how they got to that light at the end of the tunnel. Like, I remember there was just this commercial back in the, the early 2000s about a little egg that has depression and the commercial <laughs> says, are you like this egg? Yep. And I'm like, that's me. That's how I feel. Right. And to know, even in the commercial, it said, there is a way forward. Mm -hmm. There's a path forward. And I had someone in my life uh, who I loved and loved me who helped me get there and, and seek help and talk to someone. So I think when we're reporting on this, if we can talk about this openly and give people the knowledge that, yes, there is light at the end of the tunnel, mm -hmm. you can get through this, this does happen in life, and there's an answer. There are options. Uh, and, and also medicines. I mean, honestly, yes. my mom always says, better living through medicine. Yes. <laughs> right. I mean, there, there, are, there are medical options from therapy to, to prescriptions that can help you. You know, for me, on Friday, after we got the Bourdain news, because uh, our show was on tape on Friday. Then we got the news about Charles Krauthammer. Do you guys know Charles Krauthammer? Mm -hmm. So he is, I would argue, the, the greatest political conservative thinker of our time. I mean, he, he, he's the William F. Buckley of our time. And he announced that he has terminal cancer and put out this, I thought, beautiful, of course, typical for Charles, well-written statement <laughs> on Friday that reads in part, my doctors tell me their best estimate is that I have only a few weeks left to live. This is my final verdict. My fight is over. I leave this life with no regrets. It was a wonderful life, full and complete with the great loves and great endeavors that make it worth living. I'm sad to leave, but I leave with the knowledge that I lived the life that I intended. What a gift to be able to say that. And what an inspiration to the rest of us yeah. to make sure we're doing that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think Charles represents um, some of what's missing in our current discourse. You know, just really thoughtful, um, conservative ideas without um, any mean-spirited name-calling. We have none of that um, with Charles. And I think that we have to get back to that. We have to get back to just a more compassionate society. I think with the latest news of the suicides, it's so tragic. We need to reach out to our family members. We need to ask if they're okay. We need to connect with the people who matter. Yeah, and I would say that he's getting to hear some of that while he's still alive. I while know. we're giving all these outpourings of people when they aren't alive and how wonderful it would be if we could start to show kindness and be appreciative and let the people in your life know how much you care, yep. even when you think that, but they know, who cares? We don't need to get into that with them. But why not? Because right, right. How, maybe that's the thing someone needs to pull it, that It could off. be something yeah. small. Honestly, yep. it could be like at the deli counter in the morning where you show somebody a kindness or crack a joke or, mm -hmm. you know, in my case, say something stupid. Um, <laughs> honestly, it, it, it doesn't have to be some grand gesture, yeah. you know? It could just be something self-deprecating. as you walk by them. Right. Can I say, tell you something about Charles, though? One of the things, I, one of the many things I loved about him, because we worked together for 14 years over at Fox News, um, even though you won't find a, a more truly committed conservative in the country, um, one of his closest friends was a diehard Democrat. And they found a way over the course of their lives to talk about things in a civil, respectful way. Someone in the Wall Street Journal, uh, it was actually Faye Vincent in the Wall Street Journal today, talked about um, Charles's self-effacing reserve um, and said, it's important to play the game well, but it is also important how one leaves the arena. Mm -hmm. And he is leaving as he did when he was in the arena with dignity and as a, an example for all of us. And Charles, I will miss you greatly. I know I speak for so many. Great to have you all here. Have you too. Um, we'll be right back. Hello Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.